Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening project. So today I'm going to be showing you how to tap into an existing drip line in your garden to add a new plant. Um, this would do be the same process if you were trying to add a new pot or planter. Essentially, you are taking an existing drip line, you're adding in a new emitter for a new plant or pot. So if you caught when I planted this little hedge behind my bench, I went ahead and I trenched from my existing garden bed over here with some black quarter inch tubing um, and put water to these three. Then I planted my new pop star hydrangea, so four plants. And today we're planting another twist and shout endless summer hydrangea. I was not planning on this. If you watched my pop star video, you know that I was actually planning to put a blueberry bush over here and I may still, but my mom surprised me with this twist and shout hydrangea and you know your girl's never gonna turn down free plants, especially gift ones that are beautiful. I love the twist and shout hydrangea. I have one already on the other side of my porch. They bloom a baby pink in my garden and are beautiful. The pop star in the summer hydrangea is the same uh, type of plant, has the same beautiful lace cap hydrangea blooms. It is just the smaller version is the little sister. So it only gets two to three, whereas this one gets uh, three to five. So we're gonna put it a little further down on this side of the garden bench. You want to see that entire video with the pop star hydrangea I go over all of the endless summer hydrangeas in my garden. I have every single one in the lineup except for the Blushing Bride, the white version. Um, so I will link that down below. But today we are not talking about hydrangeas, we're just planting one. We are talking about drip. So I have some black drip tube. This is a quarter inch drip tube. I've got some uh, landscape staples. I've got a two gallon uh, emitter, which is what we're going to put to our hydrangea, they like a lot of water. And I've got a little tea um, coupler. So we're going to go ahead and plant this, then we'll splice into the existing line and bring the water over to our new plant. This is a very easy thing to do. It's one of the best reasons to have a drip system because it's very easy to add new plants, direct water directly to those plants. I'm not watering my entire hillside with a soaker hose. I am only watering the three, four, five plants that I'm actually wanting to grow over here and not all of the weeds that are trying to grow. Um, and so with a drip system, you can expand. If I wanted to take one of these plants out, I could easily put a goof plug in, cut that emitter out. It's very customizable. So we're going to start by planting this guy, digging our hole and uh, putting in some fertilizer so that he is happy. Once we get him planted, I'll bring you all in closer and show you the exact process for adding a new drip tube and getting this guy hooked up to drip so that he has constant water. Let's get started. All right, so we have our hydrangea planted. You can see right over here that we have our existing drip line coming up onto our Texas sage. 
and it has a one gallon emitter, which is perfect for a sage. It's held down by that little staple. So I could tee in right here and come over to our hydrangea, but I know because I laid this line that it goes right past this bench, goes all the way across and it comes up over in the garden bed. So instead of going from here to here, we followed the line back and dug down until we found it. And I'm going to splice in right here for the only, only for only, only because it will be a shorter distance. We'll have to use less material than if we were coming all the way from over here. It's a shorter side of the triangle. So let's go ahead. We are going to cut this line, put our T in, extend our drip tube, put an emitter in, close her up, and it's literally that easy, y'all. That's almost long enough. It's my spare piece. All right, so we're going to start by uncoiling this and we're just gonna put our T in right here. So that is easier. Dun, 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 dun. Perfect, so snug it all the way down until it meets that larger part of the T, and that is good to go. So now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to cut this guy right in the middle. And water's going to come out, because the water was actually just running about 30 minutes ago. Make sure we don't lose any either of these ends. Start to work one side in. Perfection. The other side in. It's easier if you have good wrists. My mom can do these in five seconds, but I have bad arthritis from years of dance and cheerleading. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to put a landscape staple in to hold this down. Perfect. Going to lay this out so we know where to cut. We want it to go right to the root ball. Right there. And at this point, we can put anything on this end. We can put a half gallon emitter, a one gallon, a two gallon for a hydrangea. We could put a connector with a length of a hose with emitters. We can put a adjusting emitter that goes from zero to ten gallons for a hydrangea a specific two gallon emitter is perfect like i said earlier we're not trying to water the whole hillside just these specific plants so put that right up to our root ball get him pinned in so that he stays where we want him now we don't have to bury this guy, but I'm going to compost and do pea gravel over here. This is not a, uh, you know, kind of garden bed that I want exposed hoses. Really none of my garden beds I want exposed hoses. So we're gonna bury him. If you want to be able to know where your hoses are, if you don't think you'll remember, um, I'll show you up top. I've got a spot where I put a flag because I know I want to put a pot up there. So I ran drip by it. 
and I put a little garden flag so that when I go to do it, I'll know exactly where to dig for that tubing. And that's it. This guy's planted. He has water. He will start getting water twice a day now. It is that easy to add a new plant or pot to an existing drip system. We've done the same for all of these existing plants. And right up here, this little flag, very inconspicuous, but that is marking my drip tube. I'm going to put a pot right here, with a bunch of plants in it. And I wanted to be able to uh, know exactly where to dig for that drip tube. So he is anchored down there with a landscape staple and I'll be able to put a pot. In the meantime, thank you to mom for my new pretty hydrangea. He's going to look beautiful there, flanking this side. I'm very excited. I'm even more excited that I am not going to have to come out and water him myself automatically twice a day. He will get water and I don't have to worry about it, which is the whole goal for me of gardening. Every single plant in my garden is on drip. My, uh, my stock tank over here, my butterfly garden, my raised beds, my actual garden, those planters, my window boxes makes life so much easier. So I hope this video was helpful. I have done a lot of videos on drip. I will link that playlist right here. So I was worried this video might be a little redundant, but my best friend is putting in raised beds. She is setting up her drip. And this is a question that she's had. So I figured if she's asking it, y'all probably are too. So if you have any more questions about drip or irrigation, or how my system is set up, please leave them below and I will make sure to answer your questions for you. Hope you liked this video. Bye y'all.